Welcome back to the broom shop. So today we're going to be weaving something like this on top of a broom like this. So most of y'all who are here today already got a kit and got some reeds in it. You're going to need your scissors and a knife. And just a heads up, you're going to need to throw the reeds I sent you into water three hours ahead of time. So what you want to do is soak all your reeds just how you got them. Some of you might have gotten halves of reeds, some of you have gotten whole reeds. I just drop them all in a bucket so they're covered. So see you in three hours. So here I am with my soaked reeds and I can use the scissors I have to cut them generally into length. Don't worry, there'll be another chance later on to get them completely the same length. So then I'll take my bundle of reeds and using a knife, I use this sawed off kitchen knife to slowly and carefully split your reeds down to an even shape and size. This is about the size I like here. Now it's really important while you're doing this to carefully go through and split them down to length. Sometimes that'll mean taking more or less off and sometimes that'll mean losing extra parts and just composting that. You can split the reeds all the way from the top using a heavy knife or if you only have a smaller knife available you can use that as well. Now after you've got the whole bundle take the time to lay them out and make sure they are all pretty close in width and thickness. If you don't like the way one of them looks you can shave down the back and fix it that way. Okay we're ready for the next step. Okay we're back. You've got your cut reeds, your turkey wing broom that you've made, your foot brake with some string wrapped around it, and then your scissors and knife should be within reaching distance. So we're going to switch the camera so you can watch my quick start knot and then how to weave the reeds. Let's get started. Okay, good. See. So I start this, if I've already got my turkey wing woven, I'm going to make what I like to call a little quick start knot. So I'm going to tie this as if I'm tying a jerk string. And if you haven't watched the other video, I recommend watching the turkey wing video first. So you make a little noose, you'll slide the string through it, and then this is going to go around your broom here. So the two parts, the, the loop part will be on the top, the single part of it will be on the bottom. So that'll go around your broom, at the top of the broom here, and then I'm going to put my foot brake all the way down with the string coming up and over the foot brake, I'm gonna put that under my feet to start. So they're gonna go inside facing out and up away from the broom. And you're gonna to want to have an odd number going around for a standard weaving pattern Full disclosure, if I don't have the right number, sometimes what I'll do is split one down at the very end after I get them all on there to make sure I have an odd number. In this case, I know I have an odd number. And make sure you really space your reeds very close together. So I'm going to make a nice band there that's holding it onto my broom. And then I'm going to spiral down. And then I'm going to start folding these reeds down. So you can fold them down in a group and then come around, making sure you like how they're sitting. You can fold them down in a group and come around. And here I'm going to work to kind of move these a little bit so they're covering any string down below. You can also move them one at a time. So I'm going to make sure all my reeds are pulled down nice and snug before I tighten that down. So I'm going to go around this three times and then I'm really going to start my over under pattern. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently support my reed with my thumb, scooting it almost to the side and under. It's really easy if you go 
forward really hard or if you crank your reed really hard without support, they're very easy to break. So you wanna make sure you're just going over and under, kind of gently supporting the reed, letting your string go slack as you go around. And here you can see I've hit the beginning again. And one little tip for you is I'm generally speaking, trying to line up where my string is now with the row below it. So I almost won't be able to see the row below it. That's gonna give you a nice tight weave as you go. So sometimes that's almost gonna feel like you're holding your broom diagonally. That's totally okay. Whatever's gonna line up your rows really nicely. And you can hear that tiny bit of cracking happening. And again, I'm just manipulating my broom to kind of stay in line with my thread and stay out of the way. So I'll slow it down one more time. I'll just gently scoot the reed around, gently scoot the reed around, gently scoot the reed around, and then pull tight, holding with my foot brake as I go. So I'll go, continue all the way around until I've woven as far as I want to. I've got a few stray hairs here where the broom corn is a little bit shredded, but I like to line up where I started and where I finished, I like those to be even. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the broom once. And then this is gonna work just the same as you finish off your turkey wings to tie them, except you're gonna put your jerk string underneath and pull into the broom. So I'm gonna place that underneath the line with the head facing down. I'm gonna wrap around three, four, five times, whatever I feel like is really tight. I'm gonna anchor it with my thumb, grab a knife or some scissors, and I'm gonna cut the line ahead. So now I'm gonna stab that through the loop, and then I'm gonna pull, and here you really wanna make sure the string is inside of the jerk string, and I'm gonna pull that through. So, this is a great spot where if you have an awl, I personally like to cut these short and then tuck it into the weave over there. Um, I think that's a great way to do it. This is what we've got so far. If you don't have an awl, you could just cut this short. I guess I just like the extra safety of knowing that it's tucked in there. Some people will cut it close and then burn it if it's nylon. So that's what I've got so far. And then I'm gonna carefully take my knife or scissors and trim these to length. I use a knife, just be careful not to cut the nylon underneath. looks a little like this or it will with some practice. I'm releasing a broom making video a month on classic styles and next month is the cobweber which is the tall broom you use to clean cobwebs off your ceiling. If you're interested in any of these follow the links below and they'll take you to our class our broom of the month club where you can learn more awesome broom making. So see you in the next video.